Chris here from SwapPart.com and I'm about to do a review right now on an LED tester. Um, I'm really excited about this because I've been waiting about three weeks for it to get here from China. And what it is, it's a model number TKDMR GJ4C. It's the latest uh, model out and you can't even get it yet from US sellers. Nobody has it yet so unfortunately China is the only option and that means waiting a little while but I believe it's going to be well worth the wait. Um, what's really neat about this one is it doesn't just uh, power the strip and test it but it also shows you how much current the strip is drawing and that can be very useful when you're troubleshooting a TV because uh, or any LED strip, it doesn't have to just be for TVs, but that's probably the most common use. But what's really uh, good about that is you can see if your strip is drawing more current than the rest of the strips, and if it is, it's you know it means you most likely have a failing LED or more than one on that strip. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, switch cameras, and we're going to open this box and we're going to see how this thing works. So another thing I want to add about uh, the the way this tester displays current and where that would actually be useful would be if you know if I was working on an actual TV and I can't see the strips you know they're in the TV I haven't opened it up yet and the thing is is you could have an LED that's shorted and an ordinary tester is still going to light that strip and just that one shorted LED isn't going to produce any light, but you wouldn't know that when it's inside the TV. So, you know, you test it, it comes on, you think everything's good, you go on to the next strip, maybe they all light, and then you sit there trying to figure out why your TV's not working, and you start going, you know, off onto other troubleshooting. Uh, pathways I guess you could say and you just walked right over the problem so you missed it um, so you could waste a lot of time that way this having the current displayed is actually going to alert you to that problem like hey this one LED strip is drawing less current or more current than the others uh, something's definitely going wrong here I got it set up here and I got it so that we can see the display while I'm testing. Uh, now you'll notice there's only just that one little light on the display. Now when that's on it's because it's in sleep mode and if you see if I touch it to the, uh, the strip all I get is a little blink. To wake it up you have to actually touch the probes together and then it wakes up. And then, as you can see, we got one LED that's not lighting right away. This strip is bad. So, we just hit 20 milliamps. A few seconds from now, it'll go up. Okay, it's going up. It stops at 70. Now, that's not the upper limit. It's actually uh, adjustable. You touch the probes together, like so. And you'll notice it starts blinking. Then it'll say one. Okay, this is going to be a test at one milliamp. And this is what happens. Now it's funny because now that one LED is working at one milliamp. Before it wasn't. But then if we touch them together again and we hold it, it'll go to auto. So the auto is when it starts at one, then it goes to 20, and then a few seconds from now it'll go to 70. So there you can see it's at 70. Now I want to try, well let's do the other strips first. See if we get the same readings. So yeah, it's around 40 volts, 70 milliamps. So these are really all very close to each other. 
if it was like you know a significant difference between the readings on one and another then you would know one of them was definitely bad So now if we continue holding these probes together, we go one, auto, and now that's 20, it's just going to keep going. We can go all the way up to 300 like this, and that's what we're about to do. So 300 milliamps, we're going to see if this will actually burn up a strip or not. I don't know what's going to happen. I haven't done this yet. So there is 300 milliamps and 49 volts, and it's not burning the strip up, so that's neat. Um, yeah, I think I like this. So one more thing, actually. Um, that I know I would want to see if I was watching this review. So we're going to short those together. See that it actually is still plugged in and working. Okay. Now, I know I would want to know, can I touch these probes? So we're going to find out. Yeah, you can see that it's on. And I don't feel anything. And my hands are actually a little sweaty right now too, so it's safe to touch the probes. It actually does know that I'm touching them because you can see that the voltage, ooh, I felt that. So if you touch them for too long, you'll feel it. Yeah, yeah, the more my hands sweat, the more I start feeling that. So I don't recommend touching the probes for too long, so. Okay, so that was the review of the TD-GJ4C LED tester, and overall I'd say I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I've been waiting to get one of these for a while, like I said, and I almost got the earlier version, which was the GJ3C, and I actually had purchased it, and then I canceled the purchase and bought this one from the same seller because I wanted the, uh, the ammeter function. I feel like that could be really useful in troubleshooting strips that light but may not work in the TV. So, uh, like I said, I'll link the uh, product in the description and you can check it out for yourself. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Click like and subscribe and don't forget to click the little notification bell and that way, when I put out new videos, you'll get a notification on that. And I plan on trying to put videos out on a regular basis. This is my first review, and I have no doubt that I'll be doing a lot more. So, thanks for watching.